Alright, should be making a video. I figure we'll do uh, Ken Wheeler as the distant dumbass. You know, any week will do. But, <laughs> so yeah, he's won again. Yeah, no surprise. I haven't watched the video yet, but I'm sure it's really stupid. So, <laughs> so let's play it. Gravity and weight. Anti-gravity examined via, let's see, via what? Well, we'll see when we click on it. Add to the fun. Via retroductive platonic logic. So, go back in time. Oh, gotta wait till the ad plays. Yes, Ken needs the money. At least the down votes are up a little higher. You know, the most useful tool in the world for figuring stuff out is an ancient lost secret. It's called Platonic or Pythagorean. It doesn't make any difference. Platonic is. Uh, yeah, it's right. Logic is logic, frankly. Logic is combining facts, Ken. I don't know what you think logic does, but that's all it does. You combine facts. It is Pythagorean. Platonic retroduction. You make definitive statements when people love to use the word anti-gravity. People love to throw that word around. So the same reason people throw around the word magnetism and polarity. And then what is one thing I've proven after these many years is nobody knows what the hell they're talking about when they use the word polarity or when they're using uh, the word... Well, polarity seems kind of obvious. <laughs> There's two poles usually and it just means one of them is pointing at you more than the other one. <laughs> that one's not too complicated. And clearly lots of people have lots of opinions on magnetism and you're just such an arrogant turd to think you're the only one who knows anything. I mean, it's okay, you can think you're right. Well, no, it really isn't it okay, because you have no reason to think you're right. Because you have no evidence. Yeah, you lack something called evidence. See, that's the fact part of logic. Logic requires you to have a collection of facts to do the logic with. No point in having logic without facts to logic <laughs> on magnetism or when they're using the word quantum I hate it when people say that because quantum yes yes we all know this You've, we've all been over this yes we hate people using words the wrong way and stealing words that don't have anything to do with what they're talking about like whatever quantum toilet paper quantum bullshit yes it's all over the place silly quantum doesn't refer to anything you just put the word quantum in front of something I mean it's ridiculous uh, it's amazing I'm well the shit you put in front of your titles is uh, you know, amazing, amazingly inaccurate. First time ever seen when, yeah, it's an experiment done, you know, only 178 years ago. How many things people stuck that stupid word in front of? Um, just ask them, what, or to ask them what a field is. Yeah, well, I'll ask you what a first time. You really don't understand what first time means. Um, so anyway, uh, yes, it's a good point to raise. Uh, yes, they don't explain what a field does, but you don't explain what anything is. Anything. You don't explain what any of your crap is made out of, your hyperburloids, your troyroids. You don't explain what any of it is. Well, people love the scientists specifically, and scientists are not scientists today, but there is mathematician a truth. Just some, you, you, what, you could throw out some word, it's ether. Well, what the fuck is that? <laughs> you know, what, what the fuck is ether? I know what water is. I know what oxygen and atmosphere is made out of. I know what other mediums are. I can give them names. How come the ether doesn't have any... Why don't you give me, draw a picture of what ether looks like? What's the molecules of ether look like? Science, a scientist in the Aristotelian or Platonic sense, is something totally different. Those people were people in search of truth. <laughs> they hadn't even found a good outhouse. And he thinks they knew the truth. I mean, really, seriously. They had really hadn't even figured out that it's not too cool to have poo running down the street. And facts, based upon logic, evidence, and retroduction. Specifically, we... And they had no evidence to do their logic on, right? They had very few technical instruments, very few experiments that could be done. I mean, uh, beyond like that, <laughs> they could do that experiment. Um, they didn't know what a bacterium was or a virus. Huge, huge, huge uh, stuff missing from their understanding of reality. We can talk about anti when people use the word anti-gravity erroneously. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. Let's define well, obviously, nobody could know what they're talking about when they say something like anti-gravity because it's a misnomer. It's a non sequitur. It's a 
It's a completely broken piece of rhetoric. It's like anti-water. There's no such thing as anti-water. Funny like gravity. When you're talking about gravity, you're talking about the loss of weight, right? Oh, the loss of weight. No, I don't think so. Um, it's a little more complicated than that, obviously. Um, you know, weight is just a way of measuring the momentum created by gravity. You're just measuring momentum, really. You know, I could I could shoot a bullet at a scale, and it's going to weigh a whole lot. No gravity involved. You know, because we're just measuring really the pressure, the force pushing it, uh, that pushed it, that it now possesses. It captured a bunch of force and is now compelled to move, and it moves with such velocity that when it hits something, it will weigh a tremendous amount. One implies the other, and people thought, and weight is neither is it an absolute nor does it exist. Just as waves. Yes. Well, again, this is this is all part of the fake physics routine. Is we'll misparaphrase the opposition, so they'll he'll pretend that physicists don't know the difference between weight, atomic weight, mass, you know, all these. They, yeah, they know the difference. Just don't exist. Sure, waves exist. Scientists love talking about waves. Waves, you know. Waves of what? Waves. Yes, waves in what? And you talk about a bunch of hyperboroids and toroids and all this other stuff. Toroids in what? Ether. Of what? <laughs> let's talk about anti-gravity just for a second. And let's define what... Yes, will you ever get to that subject? That's a good question. We're two minutes in. You haven't touched upon it at all. Merely to say it and say funny language. Bad word. But you haven't said anything people are really talking about without thinking because nobody has their brains turned on anymore because nobody knows how to think. People use the word... Uh, and you think thinking is scheming, deceiving, and overtly lying. And you know, your deceptions are clear. I mean, clearly you know the pharaoh cell isn't doing what you're saying it's doing. You know what it really looks like under a magnifying glass, I'm sure, or, or a microscope. I'm sure you understand that this is not bending light and it's not doing all the things you're claiming it does and you know that if you put one LED in there you get just one arc of light I mean you know that so why do you just keep frickin lying about it why don't you just tell the truth that it's a toy it's not a scientific instrument pretty anti-gravity you're talking about not only the absence of weight uh -huh, but the complete opposite of mutual mass acceleration by the way mass is never Mutual mass acceleration, the absence of mutual mass acceleration. Again, terminology means absolutely nothing to anybody rational. There's no mutual mass acceleration. There's no such thing. There has to be a cause for the effect. You don't explain the cause. Accelerate towards each other. They accelerate towards a null point, right? And it's not... They accelerate towards a null point, which there's no evidence that that's what they're accelerating toward. All the evidence points to the fact that they accelerate towards the center of the object that has the gravity. And all the mathematics fits that arc. There's no center point it's heading for, because the center point wouldn't have the same arc. So there's no center point. You know, that's, that's just provably wrong. And that's what you call your platonic logical deduction or re retroduction. Well, I'm sure if we could dig up all those dead guys that you admire so much who didn't have a decent toilet, I'm sure that they might be offended that you sit there and take their name or their um, what they were attempting to accomplish, the truth they were seeking, and imply that they would be as dumb and deceptive as you are. I'm sure they'd be quite offended. I don't know who the dead guy is that you stole his face from. But I'm sure you never asked his permission. Can I steal your face and pretend I'm smart like you? Curve is space-time. Time is not a thing. A time is a... Yes, that's right. That curve space-time is nonsense. You could just say curve space-time is nonsense. Now I'm going to get talk about anti-gravity. Well, why don't you talk about anti-gravity? Why don't you try to explain how it's impossible or it's possible? We don't even know what your silly argument is. You haven't made it yet. You haven't even indicated that you have one on the subject. It's a measure of magnitudes, and space has absolutely no properties, which Nikola Tesla famously said. It uh, yes, and I would agree that there's space should is empty. You think it has properties, you think it's ether. So again, what's the difference? 
if Tesla thought the, the empty space was ether, then it certainly has properties. So that doesn't even make any sense, does it? No, it doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, if you think there's an ether, ether has properties, right? It makes certain things possible. It can perpetuate stuff. It can do stuff. So it has properties. So you're the one giving space properties too. I'm the one saying space is empty, and then there's matter bits, and there's force bits, and the rest is empty. So if there's no force bit in the spot, and there's no matter bit in a the spot, then it's empty. There's nothing there. It's a physical universe. That's why they called it physics, is because they had some idea that it was physical. And he's correct. Space has attributes, but it has no properties. Uh, look, I, I mean, any linguist will he's supposed to know all these languages, and yet he doesn't know that that's the same thing. An attribute is a property. You, you can't say it has attributes, but no properties. It's breaking language. I mean, just basic vocabulary. It's like saying it's up and it's down. It makes no sense. It's illogical. It's, it's baby talk. It's mush. It's gibberish. So here you profess to be a reasonably intelligent person, you profess to know and have conquered languages, and yet you don't know basic vocabulary rules. You know, that you can't, you can't sit there and deny a word its, its definition. A category by definition has, has things that share properties, and by definition properties are attributes. Objects are never accelerating towards one another. They're accelerating towards a no field pressure mode mode node. Excuse me. Let me restate that. Towards a no pressure node in counter space. Again, just nonsense, but you know, I guess you could if you if you you know, it, once it's moving, you have to consider its own momentum and so the line will never be at some null point between the two objects. So it's never accelerating towards a null point. So it's just, just, it's just nonsense. There's no real world example of that taking place, so you're just wrong. You can even see that underneath the supercell that he brings to... So, so he's bringing up this stupid toy that he knows is a toy. He knows, <laughs> he knows the gimmick of it. And he's just pretending it's doing something. And you can see something under the supercell. No, you'll see a distortion of reality. You won't see anything real. Opposite polarity magnets together. They're not accelerating towards themselves. Well, there's this actual little tiny black null that's created between the two and they're accelerating towards that, not towards each other. Now, well, well, why don't you show me an example of that with the moon and the earth or the moon and the sun or any, any gravitational body. Why don't you show me where they're moving towards some other point than the actual center of the other object's gravity. Because that's their ob ob obligation, frankly. <laughs> that's where the gravity is created, is from the center out. The mass between you and the center is what's causing the gravity. From conventional ape-like understanding? <laughs> well, technically it's from the other side of the circle, the mass through that whole line. But you can average the line to the center. Obviously, from any position, it'll always look like the center. Which is what human beings are today. They're not thinkers. Human beings are still very slightly evolved apes. They think that... Yes, and you're kind of a demonstration of that, right? Because you're still like some primitive, you know, who's got to put cork in his ears, right? you got your earlobes pierced, uh, you know, and you're drawing pictures on yourself. Uh, for what purpose? For some cultural stupid notions and and um, some notion of uh, bravado or you know some bullshit and so you're owned by it monkey man Mass uh, is a fat monkey accelerate towards one another so when people use the word anti-gravity let's be succinct because the devil is in the details and you actually have to have a discerning and a script <sighs> yes well and you're still haven't gotten to it so what's your point I, I mean, I could say, okay, anti-wet. You know, let's figure out what that means. Discriminating mind and understanding when people say any gravity, they're talking about weight. Okay. Well, no, there's there. If they're talking about gravity, then they're using the word gravity. Gravity has a specific cause. Again, weight can be caused by lots of things that can create momentum. Will create weight. If I jump off a table, I'm going to change my weight. 
okay, uh, because I'm going to allow myself to gain more velocity uh, through my seconds of acceleration. I'm going to increase the amount of acceleration because I'm going to give it more time to move me. And before I hit an object that stops me from moving where I no longer can gain any velocity. So let's define weight, because weight is no different than talking about a shadow, or uh, talking about uh, something emitting light, or talking about polarity. Nobody knows. Weight. So, so why, why combine all these words? They're not the same word at all. They're not the same concept at all. They're not even analogistic to each other. So just more gibberish somehow. Let's put all the same things, uh, let's put different things in the same category. Why? Why'd you do that? Tree, bug, uh, bird, cloud. It's all the same thing. No, I, I know they're, it's not all the same thing. Those are completely different subjects. Wait. Okay, wait. Vectored acceleration. Weight doesn't exist. What do you mean it doesn't exist? Just waves don't exist? People are... So, so we've got more nonsense. We invented the word perfectly rationally. We, you know, it's a perfectly rational concept, weight. And so we have a word for it because it's been around a long time and it's usually measured based on your static condition on the surface of the earth. All right, so we don't drop things to say how much do they weigh. You know, we just sit them on a scale and balance them with some other thing that weighs. And we can tell that they have as many atoms as this other thing does in terms of atomic parts. The, the uh, electrons and neutrons and protons all add up to the same amount in the two objects. And so we have a pretty solid concept of weight. It doesn't need to be uh, broken. <laughs> There's no reason to break it and to pretend it's not a real thing. It's a real thing, but it's not gravity. Gravity and weight are not the same thing. Mass, in a sense, and weight are not the same thing. But clearly you can make the equivalency by just stating that if you put them on scales under the same conditions, you'll be able to tell the mass of one object by comparing it to another object. Clearly, that's what a scale does. People are reifying something as something else because a wave is not what something is, it's what something does. In other words, a wave is an attribute of something else. My hand is a wave. An attribute of something else. It's, you can just say everything is cause and effect, so obviously everything is a consequence of causes. But clearly, again, the word wave wasn't intended to be an explicit definition of the cause of waves. It was just a description of the effect of a wave. That's what they used the word for. So again, what is all this for? The semantic games you're playing, these little weaselly word games um, that are just nothing. Clearly, in water, a wave is caused, and we understand the cause quite uh, completely. Now, when you get into other kinds of objects, yeah, the causes are not nearly as uh, well understood. Waving, something's waving. The flames are waving, right? This, a wave is not a thing. What? We can make it a weight. Let's make a definitive statement. Since weight is not definitive, when people say any gravity, they're talking about weight. Weight is location specific. If you only have two objects in the universe, if object B instantaneously reappears. Uh, again, it, it is not location specific. It's, I, I mean, obviously, you can measure it. Um, you know, in, in, in a sense, in, in a, in a, you have to have the same conditions to do the measurement, but even if you had different conditions, you can understand the difference in the conditions and still understand its weight relative to something else. So as long as you have complete enough information about the environment it's in, you know its weight. It's not that complicated. It appears at half the distance to object A, right? Then what happens to the weight? I thought nothing moved faster than the speed of light. If weight changes instantaneously relative to position or location... Uh, nothing happens instantaneously. It's, that's a silly word, see? So that's a primitive old word. That's a platonic retard, kind of, when the, when the world didn't understand. Uh, but any modern person who has any kind of understanding of reality is going to understand nothing happens instantaneously. It just can't. Everything takes time to get from point A to any point B. There's no getting there instantaneously. Can't happen. Nothing changes instantaneously. It takes time for a position to change. Then weight is not a property possessed by either object A or object B. 
Well, obviously it is, and it's a consequence of its mass, its atomic components, and its velocity. That's it. It has to have mass, and it has to have velocity to have weight. This retroductive observation is undeniable. It's an absolute... Well, it's completely deniable. It's completely just word rubbish. Uh, you know, word salad, word vomit. It's just baby talk. Absolute fact. Weight is also, too, medium-specific. We're talking about we, medium. Okay? We're talking about fields. Okay, we're talking about dielectricity, electrostatics, and magnetism. Specifically, everything is electrical. But when we say electrical, we have to, have to understand that electricity is a hybrid of dielectricity and magnetism. Five times cycles, cubic cycle, electric. Well, well, again, so this, this idea that you change its weight, you don't really change its weight. If you do relative comparisons, it's always going to come up with its... There's, you're never going to be able to have the scales in balance. If you have... If you have something that weighs one kilogram and you have something else that weighs one kilogram, you're not going to be able to fuck the balance up by putting them in different mediums. You have to physically change the environment, put one in one medium and one in a different medium for you to get different effects. So that's just more rubbish. Electricity is a hybrid. So ultimately we're talking about two modalities of electrostatics and magnetism, right? So more, now he's changing the subject some more. Electrostatics and magnetism and something that has something to do with anti-gravity. So again, this is just electric universe rubbish now he's talking. That somehow gravity is electrostatics. Gravity, I'd argue, is, has, has elements of uh, um, you know, electric and magnetic theory have to be applied to the real function of gravity but the fact is gravity just has to do with absorbing acceleration. So you're absorbing force that would have hit something else. By absorbing the force, by using it to move, okay, <laughs> if it moves, I move this towards the camera, technically, technic well, not technically, because frankly it's not a force that would have hit the camera anyway because my hand is not, uh, not what's the right thing to say, it's not a static part of the environment. But I just mean if you change the static environment around something, and so you're just, by, by being in the way, by absorbing force that would have hit the camera, the camera gets hit by less and it tends to move towards me. Now, that's actually physically happening, right? If I move towards the camera, that's physically going to happen to the camera. Force was absorbed. See, but I'm using force that isn't in the field. I'm not, I'm not, it's not the force behind me that I'm absorbing, so it's a new force, so it's not going to have the same effect. So I can't really use that as an example. But clearly, gravity has it's just one thing that happens. You absorb field energy on one side, and by absorbing it to move, the other thing doesn't get hit by it. And if it doesn't get hit by it, it means there's more energy hitting it on the other side and it moves. That's all gravity is. So to do anti-gravity you have to create some effect that's stronger than the gravity. So it's not anti-gravity, it's pro-magnetism or it's pro-something else. You have to create some other mechanism that's stronger than gravity. And frankly gravity is strong. Okay, If I have to move this this way, it takes real energy to do it this mass. So it takes real energy to do an anti-gravity. Gravity doesn't exist. The only thing that actually differentiates. Yeah, it does. And it's actually a particle gravity. Little bullets of okay, momentum. So gravity from so-called magnetic attraction, right, is the principle that one is point non-specific accelerate yeah, the, uh, the, uh, the attractive force is always just an absence of repulsive force, frankly. It's an absence of pressure. So you can use magnets to create high pressure, strong repulsion, and low pressure attraction. But that's all you're doing is mitigating pressure. And the other one is coherent, point-specific, or point acceleration. There's no such thing as magnetic attraction. Magnetic so point acceleration doesn't say anything. We know there's there atoms at least. You have to concede. There's electrons and protons. You want to pretend they don't exist, fine, but whatever. You have to move this stuff. 
it doesn't point accelerate every little bit in the object has to be compelled to move so some kind of force has to act on every little bit it says in my definition is increasing force and motion i.e. centrifugal divergence magnetic so centrifugal divergence like that can mean anything to anybody centrifugal divergence how, how does something centrifuging diverge how does it do that doesn't mean anything silly mush talk attraction is as stupid as saying dehydrated water for example just as a perfect analogy to make it clear in your heads well I know but that's the subject is whether there's any kind of such thing as an anti-gravity and you still haven't touched the subject at all since weight is medium specific let's say for example you asked a little a five uh, a five-year-old girl right to move um, I don't weigh I weigh 254 pounds okay not me you ask a five-year-old girl to move a 500 pound fat uh, fat person right well that's impossible right? hey little girl is this really heavy dude over, dude over here he's 500 pounds let's see you move. <clears throat> well, obviously it'd be easy to move if he's floating on a, uh, a swimming pool so if you can reduce the friction it's not quite as bad Friction is the real problem in moving weights. Now, asking her to lift it against gravity, well, that's a challenge. Move them. Never going to happen, is it? Never. Okay, let's change that scenario. Wait, let's wait. You know, that dude's 500 pounds, right? But wait, right? Weight is medium specific. You take that same heavy guy and you throw him in the water, right? You, you toss him in the swimming pool. Yeah, uh, well, this, the, the medium specific part is you're just eliminating friction. So I'm just saying make the example lifting the person and then explain how you can undo what's causing the weight in the first place, which is the gravity. So again, you're just ignoring the subject of your own video. It's not about moving something this way on a greasy, you know, on ice. Oh, put the person on ice. Yeah, you can do lots of things to create a, no, an absence of friction so the weight won't work against you. But uh, the point is, is you're not fighting the force that's pushing it down. There's no force pushing it this way or this way on the ice. So you're not fighting a force. Cool, and then you get the little girl with her floaties. Yeah, and she's on the kitty end of the, you know, where her little legs can touch. The five-year-old uh, girl could easily move that 500-pound person, could she? Yeah, because the medium changed. What? No, the force changed. You're not fighting a force. There's no force pushing back the other way. There's no... So if I move the 500-pound object and I pushed it at uh, 10 meters per second per second, I added velocity to it 10 meters per second per second, and I pushed it across the ice, all right, and into the little girl... <laughs> you know, yes, the little girl isn't going to be able to overcome that force, and she's going to be uh, just, um, you know, she's going to be pushed by the wall of fat. What changed? The medium changed. So, if weight has no bearing, or is it a possession or attribute of object A or object B, and the location change is instantaneous? So again, this has nothing to do with gravity isn't the subject of weight. Gravity is the subject of a force called gravity. Uh, 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 an event called gravity, and you're not touching the subject at all. And therefore, weight too changes instantaneously. Then weight is not an attribute of either object A or object B. And if it... right, I mean, weight is a consequence of its mass and the force acting on the mass. So, but again, you're just ignoring the real subject. Gravity is a completely different subject. <laughs> it really is. The medium change. Gravity allows Again, you, applying, a, applying a force to a mass allows you to measure how much mass there is because you have to apply more force for the bigger the mass is. So if I have a 500 pound weight on ice and a 1,000 pound weight, I have to push twice as hard on the 1,000 pounds than I do the 500 pounds. I have to use more force proportionally. And that's all weight has to do with it, is that there's, there's a consequence to things having mass. Now, gravity affects masses, and so it applies more force to big things, heavy things, and less force to little things, proportionally. Less force actually affects the object, depending on its mass, how, much, how many atoms it has, how many electrons and protons it has.
changes. I mean, how much does a 500 pound, if a, you know, if you stick a 500 pound dude in the water, like, say like four foot of water, you know, just his neck is sticking up out of the water, right? A four foot dude, four foot fat dude, okay. That's logical. Is that platonic logic is to come up with a, a metaphor or <laughs> whatever, an analogy that isn't even close to reality? Yeah, four foot water, he's six feet tall, for example, and he stands on the scale. How much does that 500 pound person weigh? He's in a completely different medium, by the way. How much does he weigh? Yeah, and because there's a force acting against the force called buoyancy, because he has a bunch of air bubbles inside of him, and he has a bunch of expanded um, uh, mass, and that creates buoyancy, and so that fights against it because the water is denser than the material human. Water's denser than fat cells, for example. Heavier. Doesn't doesn't say five hundred pounds on that scale at the bottom of the pool, does it? Weight is also too vector specific. Actually, explaining that one is slightly more difficult, but it's a proven fact that if you change the approach vector, right? Yeah, there's no approach vector. Okay, we're just talking about which way the force is acting on something. Yes, you can't measure something's mass, okay, in any kind of way, really, without a force acting on it. So if it's just sitting in space and no force is acting on it, you can't tell the difference between a a hollow steel box and a solid steel box until you interact with it, until you force it to act to a force. Then you can, when the force acts on it, then you can tell how much the force moves. It will tell you how much mass it has. But there's no way to see mass or to put weight on a scale until you actually have a force acting on a mass. That's the way you can tell because the force will have to be stronger for the heavier object to move at the same speed. A curved linear vector. I don't know if you actually dropped one of your a coin in one of those. Oh, cool! Three hundred miles an hour. That's where I feel normal. Yeah, and I know. It tells me my yeah, entire sure. protected. Learn more at retireyourrisk.org. Retired. You're fucking retarded. In one of those funnels, and it goes around, and it's kind of amusing, and it goes faster and faster. If you actually do a... You throw a coin. Okay, yes. When So the coin, like when you throw coins at the old days, when you had to pay tolls, and they have a funnel. And yeah, get it. A trochoidal uh, vectored acceleration towards an object, and then weight chain... A trochoidal vectored blah blah whatever he just said. Just horse shit. I mean, clearly the coin spirals because it's shaped like a funnel. Actually, this is the reason why comets can sit there and spin and spin and go around the sun, you know, endless numbers of times, essentially, and not actually fall into the sun. They often do fall into the sun. That's exactly, their orbits are so poor that millions of them have crashed into the sun. That's why the universe is as quiet as it is now. That's why the moon isn't getting a whole bunch of craters on it anymore is because all that erratic crap did eventually crash into the sun. Uh, some of them hit the moon on the way, some hit the earth on the way, but you know, a lot of it got cleaned out because, yeah, it does fall in eventually. Explaining that one takes actually a lot more time than I have in this video. Yeah, well this video has not on the subject of anti gravity You haven't even touched the subject of gravity at all in this whole video. Just You haven't even really said the words that make any connection between this video and gravity. Weight is also too magnitude specific. The actual curved linear acceleration based upon the vector of the magnitude. Yes, yeah, it's magnitude specific again. Yes, the force has to be moving in a direction. Yes. <laughs> it can't be going this way and that way. Oh, fuck. I mean, I could lift you up and put you know, I guess I could I could bounce you on a scale. I don't know. And get an average weight. Not the mass. When we say mass, we're talking about a referring weight. But the magnitude of object A or object B, weight is also different. It is also... T yes, weight is different than magnitude or weight. Weight is different than weight. Two, affected by phase. 
So this is real nonsense, right? There's no way you can connect gravity to any kind of phase crap. There's just nothing there. It, there just isn't anything there. The forces are so reliable, so dependable. There's no fluctuations, no phasing going on. Just horseshit. Explaining that one actually takes a long time. So wait. Yes, all these things that take a long time. You've made 10 million videos. You think you would have gotten to them by now. And instead, you just keep making the same video over and over and over again where you just keep using words in ways that no person who respected vocabulary would ever use them. Undeniably, is location specific, medium specific, vector specific, magnitude specific, both of object A or object Again, and so why didn't you call this anti weight examined? I mean, you know, the subject is gravity and how you can overcome gravity in some anti way. Some, I'll just snap my fingers and pretend the force doesn't exist. Object B or object A or object uh, uh, B. And it is our object A and B and our B or A are one of the two A's or one of the one A or the four B's or maybe the three B's and the four one A's. Space specific, all of which these... Uh... Yes, it's, it's, I'll say it again just for fun because I like the word phase. Phaser, you know, that's a fun little word. Phase, oh, I phased you. Uh, five different uh... five different now now we got five different modalities and none of them have anything to do with gravity though fuck or the force that is obviously the cause of the movement which is weighed on the scale based on how much mass collects force it's like how much light the film on your camera senses. <laughs> yeah, same difference. Small sensor, small amount of light. Big sensor, big amount of light. Principles are true of weight. And we talk about anti-gravity relative to weight. The mutual mass acceleration of an object neutrally towards... And not towards another, but towards a no... Yes, mutually towards accelerating for no reason, just because it feels like it, blah, blah, blah. So it really doesn't matter where it's towards. He doesn't have any force. He doesn't have any explanation for why it happens, why the two things cause this effect. And I'm giving you the simple answer, which is it's clearly just a shadow. I mean... See, I can't move. If I move by volition, I'm using my energy to move. So I'm creating, I'm putting new energy into the system. But if I'm just sitting here and I move towards you because of gravity, right, then that means I had to absorb the force that was behind me going that way. And see, I used it up when I moved. So it didn't hit you. And you're going to move towards me. And that's called induction. So as I move, you move. When you move, oh, that means less force hit me this way. That means more force is hitting me from behind. I'm going to move. And then when I move, you're going to move. That's gravity. Very simple. Very sensible. That's retroductive, reasonable logic. That's doing a, a rational collection of facts and interpreting them into a simple statement that accurately describes the reality. Something you have no clue how to do, Ken. No pressure field, a no, a no field pressure point, excuse me, there we go, is not definitive. Anti-gravity is not only... Is not definitive. So it's a null point, but yes, it's not definitive. It's not defined. A minute ago you were so sure it was right there, and all of a sudden now it's not definable. Plain. Plausible, and it's far more than plausible, it's an undeniable absolute. So, it's plausible and undeniable. I mean, yeah, that's not exactly another... No, no, you get kicked out of lawyer school if you can't use words more rationally than that. Nobody would say uh, you go from plausible to undeniable. There's a whole range in between merely plausible and undeniable. And you haven't touched upon any of that range. Everything is, and I use this term loosely, everything is electrical. 
Any digraph? That's not saying anything at all. Yes, electrons and protons are electrical, and they're everything when it comes to matter. Clearly, the force affects the electrons and the protons differently, so therefore, the force has to have some component for which electrons and protons can discriminate. And so, yes, the whole system is electrical. But you're not explaining how that force manifests at all. Gravity is not only plausible, it's an undeniable absolute. There we go again. So he said the same stupid pile of words that he just already, he already knew he was saying it wrong because he's like, ah, oh, that's not the right way to say it. And he just reset it the same wrong way again. There is absolutely no denying this. Um, Nobody says, it's not only plausible, it's maybe possible. Nobody bothers to say something that stupid. And clearly nobody says, it's not only plausible, it's undeniable. Nobody says that, because that's logical crap. By the way, if you ever want to stop by my house and show you a neat little device that actually feels weightless, that I created about four years ago. Oh, you created a weightless device. Oh, yo, what, a helium balloon? I mean, what the fuck? Why don't you show us that, Ken? Show us the weightless device. So, finally, we're on the subject of anti-gravity, I guess. He has a little device that's anti-gravity. Well, let me know. I got three of them. One of them is in safe, safe hands. One of them's in the safe, and one of them I keep out. I mess with it every day. So he messes with it every day and he doesn't show it to us, and especially when he's doing an anti-gravity video, he doesn't show us the weightless things he has. He has whatever that is, up to Uptanium or whatever was in that stupid Avatar movie. He has some Uptanium. Oh, fuck. How can people watch this drivel without, you know, being... This is so irritating. So wrong and stupid. Um... I hate it when people say it. I, I hate the word meditation. I so, now he's, you know, just, just, so yeah, you're, you're driving way off the road, so yeah, you might as well just go into every mud puddle and every tree you can find, just crash into everything. Fuck. Now we're going to talk about meditation. That has something to do with anti-gravity and obtainium. I hate the word waves and I hate the word uh, weight. Why? Because you're so fat and you, you don't like your weight. That's actually another reason why. Yeah, and you don't like waves because your fat waves, you know, the, the vibrations go through the fat and bounce up and down all day. <laughs> but weight is not an absolute, nor is it a proxy. Well, who claimed it was an absolute beyond the fact that it's completely proportional to mass? <laughs> There's always a proportional relationship between mass and weight under the same circumstances. It always exists. Two things in the same environment of different weight, okay, will demonstrate to have different masses. Just a fact, Ken. Property of any object or the property of two mutual objects accelerating towards a null pressure point between the two, never towards each other. Right, you already said that seven times in this video. And it's just made up crap. It doesn't, you didn't explain it. You didn't even draw a picture of it, nothing, to explain how they're moving towards some other point than the center of the other object's gravity, the center of its mass. Each other. Objects never accelerate towards each other. That's the same BS people think that magnets accelerate towards one another. Magnets never accelerate towards one another. So, just more nonsense, you can clearly demonstrate they do accelerate towards each other because they actually turn to point right to the center of gravity. You know, they turn to point to it. They're actually, and you can see this underneath the supercell, like I said. Um, when we say you don't see anything under the supercell but a distortion. You're just seeing some refracting light. That's all you're seeing off little particles that are moving in rays around the magnet. It's a complete deception. It's, it's a, an illusion. It's a mirage. It's not showing you an explicit truth. It's showing you a seems-like truth, but it's not the truth. Let's say anti-gravity. Let's be specific here. and People need to refer to weight. Now, if you know out the weight 
So again, you're not, you can't null out the weight, you can't null out the mass. The thing you're trying to null out is the acceleration being caused by gravity. So point out how you can null out the acceleration caused by the force of gravity. To zero, by changing not only the location, but specifically the median. And the median that we're talking about is a field medium. This means this so, so now we've changed it to a field medium. Before he was using analogies of water or this or that, so now he's going to make it into some sort of woo-wee field of something. Field of ether. This mutual mass acceleration is the shrinking of, two, of a single toroidal field between two... So, no evidence that any of these fields exist, any single toroidal field, no evidence at all that any field of spinning around crapola exists around any of these objects ever. Just complete made up crap. Two objects towards a null pressure point in counter space and is the null mode. So finally counter space finally showed up. So Tesla said there's no properties, space has no properties <laughs> except uh, it makes counter space. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's it. Uh, counter space. I mean, what kind of, it's, you know, unwater counter space. What a pile of crap. Counter empty. Counter nothing. A counter vacuum. Point or pressure point between objects. So, and not only do you have to null it out, you actually have to reverse it. Just kind of like so-called magnetic repulsion. The magnetic repulsion, by the way, is real can't null it out in any other sense than to compensate with it with an opposite force. Magnetism, but uh, so-called magnetic attraction does not exist because that is not magnetism. Just like I'm moving my hand up here, you know, I'm, my body is applying an opposite force. It is putting energy, electricity, and magnetism, well, it's electricity, clearly, uh, fundamentally, through my body pushing muscles, expanding atoms, doing all that crap to make it move, to make all the little bits move. It's putting a force in there to compensate for the force from gravity. I mean, it's really interesting. I mean, the trillions of little things that happen in the time that you see, you know, this little quick movement, I can do it a little slower. But every atom, every electron has to actually be pushed there has to be a, the application of force, uh, an electricity has to be pushed through it, a current to push it. This is by definition. By definition. But causing an object to lose all weight and then mutually so be repelled between those two. So we know it's not losing all weight, it's just a counter force. It's just me holding this up versus me letting it go. I'm applying a counter force. I can feel it right there on my thumb. My thumb is forcing. Obviously, that's the counter force. You can't undo the gravity. So again, he's not even getting the subject of his video. Anti-gravity isn't counter force. It's somehow eliminating the gravitational force, not applying another force to compensate for it. We don't call when the space shuttle takes off. We've engaged the anti-gravity engines. <laughs> you know, nobody does that. This would be silly. Two objects, which is what denotation and connotation imply of the term. So more denotation and connotation, more just frickin', you know, useless vernacular, uncommon language. For what purpose? Why use uncommon language when you're try attempting to communicate with a mass audience? Why are you using language for which they have no idea what you're talking about? A connotation. Anti-gravity is an undeniable absolute. Anti-gravity is an undeniable absolute. How so? Where did you demonstrate it? Where did you show us? You didn't. You hide it in your safe. Your uptonium. <laughs> And people say, is anti-gravity real? And of course it's real. Ah, there we go. So, of course, there's anti-gravity. So, finally, 11 minutes and 41 seconds into the video, we finally get his opinion. So, there's such a thing as ungravity, Some kind of force you can apply that undoes gravity, that stops the gravity from gravitying.
Everything is electrical by nature. And Everything is electrical by physical uh, mechanism. By the definition of electron and proton. Charge, by definition, is electrical. And it is charge that makes everything happen. And weight is not a property of any object. It's location specific, medium specific, vector specific, magnitude specific. All right, nine times he's done this rubbish. For what purpose? Doesn't say anything, doesn't explain the force of gravity. And phase specific. And he never explained the phase part. He just said it. Phase, 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 phasey phase, 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 phase. It's just a fun word, phase, phasey, phase. Phaserite, you know, phaseosity, yes, fun word, phase. This means with the correct geometric charge. With the correct geometric charge, now whatever the hell that means, uh, charges are basically a straight line force. I mean, that's all kind of figured out by Maxwell. I mean, that's kind of the way it works. It's, it's no real geometry to it, except for straight lines. Electrostatic specifically. So, electrostatic specifically, which doesn't say anything again. <laughs> electrostatic in what way? Uh, the electrons, the protons, positive charge, negative charge, what are you talking about? You can not only. I mean, it's like him just saying, your gravity is water specific. <laughs> what? <laughs> Null outweight, but cause... Null outweight. So more just smash two words together doesn't mean anything. Null outweight. So everybody knows what an outweight is. Do you know what an outweight is? Be honest. Mutual deceleration or mutual acceleration away. So it's either <laughs> decelerating or accelerating away when the two things are being attracted. Oh, I see. Sure. That makes sense. Of course, acceleration actually implies increasing inertia and energy. Not uh, it doesn't imply it. It requires it. Okay, so you can't move unless you're moved. Uh, we use the term, or I'm using the term acceleration loosely in the, in the sense of acceleration. Okay, I'm using it loosely in the sense of you don't really have to move, but, you know... See, we're accelerating here on the surface, and the truth is we don't look like it. But our actual atomic bits are actually moving while we're standing or sitting here. They're actually moving, and they're actually denting my chair cushion. And then it goes right into the cushion, and it goes into the steel, and it goes into the floor, into the wheels, and then into the carpet, and through the floor. So I'm actually in the process of actually pushing down on the earth quite aggressively although I don't notice it so I'm sort of bouncing in the gravity my bits are going down more than they're going up overall just a fact and they're transferring that extra into the earth and heating it up pressurizing it pushing the atoms towards the center. They don't like that. I'm making the earth hot. I'm melting the interior of the earth right now. That's what I'm doing. Accelerating or moving. We're actually talking about a force vector here. We're talking about movement. Oh, but, well, there you go. You got at least a word that makes some kind of sense. That's right, a force vector. That's what gravity is made out of, a force vector. So explain how you can anti the force vector. <laughs> How do you undo the force vector? How do you stop it from doing that? You stop being affected by gravity, you. ...and force away from another thing. That's because you, this is an issue between field theory and the conventional thinking. We talk about acceleration, we think of... Uh, field theory and conventional thinking. So obviously that doesn't make much sense because the convention of physics has sort of accepted a pile of field theory. They're like, you know, putting the pedal on the gas and accelerating down the road, which is expending energy, i.e. gas, but when we speak of acceleration, we're actually not talking about uh, 
release of energy. Uh, yeah, obviously it's not the release of energy, it's the absorption of it. That's what makes matter bits move. They have to absorb energy from something. Something has to move them. Heat, which is little photons and such. Something has to push them. Very simple. It doesn't move unless something pushes it. That's the way the matter works. Something has to push it. About the, uh, mutual mass acceleration towards a null field point. Yes, mutual mass acceleration. The masses accelerate. You got that part right. It's sort of mutual, but the key point is it's inductive, and they're absorbing energy. And as they absorb the energy, the energy doesn't hit the other object, and therefore the object moves into the low pressure. It's really that simple. That's it. It's that simple. All this crap in this video... That's, the, that's where you start when you talk about gravity. Now, if you want to say anti-gravity, then you have to say, well, somehow you have to undo a shadow. And you can't really undo a shadow without shining light that was used up. And the light you're going to have to shine is going to be just as much as the amount of energy absorbed. So the only way to fight gravity is with a force of equal strength to the gravity. It's the only way you can have anti-gravity. You have to apply an equally strong force. And every mass uh, will require a different amount of force based on its mass. So if it's a heavy thing, you need a lot of force. If it's a light thing, you need a little. It's like you can just blow, and a little feather will fly up in the air. A little tiny bit of force for little tiny things. A lot of force for big fat things. And that is not the release of energy, nor is it a force, it's just the opposite of that. The force to move away once you've actually nulled out to something's weight relative to something else, since the weight is not a property of... So how do you null out its weight? See, that'd be really cool. So I could, I could just say to the Earth, I'm going to null out your mass, so you no longer block force, and no longer force me to fall towards you by my magic... I'm going to make the earth invisible so the gravity doesn't get absorbed. Why? What am I going to do? What's the key, Ken? <laughs> move the force, to move the earth to the uh, multiverse, and you stay here, and therefore you've undone gravity. <laughs> yeah. I don't, how do I. No, that ain't going to work. So either object A or object B, nulling that out with the correct electrostatic field. Yes, well, that's not going to do you any good. And by correct uh, electrostatic field, he means you pump in a bunch of force equal to the force of the gravity. So that's not going to, that's not exactly anti gravity, that's just an opposing force. That's all it is, it's just an opposing force. Of great magnitude. It is not only plausible or possible, it's an undeniable absolute. It's a logical absolute. I mean, of course it is. So, it's undeniable, logical, absolute, that I can undo gravity by, what, clicking my heels three times and saying there's no place like anti-gravity? Everything is electrical, so. So, again, that statement doesn't say anything. I would agree that technically, pretty much, that would be an accurate statement, because charge is basically why electrons and protons move, is because you hit them with a field... Uh, that uh, is complementary to their uh, designation as a charge. I point you out to the fact that people, people think is not... A field of energy, a field of particles, a field of bits. Magnetic. A field of momentum. I mean, in a strong enough magnetic field, I don't know if you've seen this before, maybe they levitate frogs, living frogs, strawberries, blueberries, any... Right, and they have to apply a force that's equal to the force of gravity. So they're not anti-gravity. They're just creating another force to compensate against the force of gravity. A force of repulsion, magnetic repulsion. So yes, you can levitate magnets on a stick. You don't need a frog. You just take a stick and put two magnets on it. And one magnet will float on top of the other magnet. There, it's anti-gravity, but it's made out of magnetic repulsion. Any sort of thing you can imagine, you know, with a strong enough applied field. 
Well, that's not magnetic. Well, everything is magnetic. So everything was electrical, now everything's magnetic. Well, obviously magnetic is a form, a consequence of electricity in the sense that clearly electrons and protons are the monopoles of magnetism. And magnetism is a dipole lure, uh, the described function. Without the dipole, it's not called a magnet. Separate the, the, the poles and you have charge. Not that complicated. Again, this is all so freaking simple. The term magnetism, they aren't thinking correctly because they don't know what magnetism is. Magnetism. Yes, and you have no, you have even less of a clue than they do, frankly. If I could take the average dumbass's uh, understanding, <laughs> it's probably closer to the truth than this guy's. Because they're probably not thinking of toroids and hyperburloids and all this swirly crap. Is not a property of an object. Magnetism is said of the point source or field coherency that exists relative to the object and the field that surrounds it. Um, that's a matter for another discussion, which I've actually already made. Endless yeah, that's right. That's right. You made endless gibberish videos saying gibberish and gibberish, and that was just a big pile of gibberish where you said absolutely nothing dis distinct. You said nothing clear. You said nothing explicit. You said nothing that my brain can in any way imagine or create an image of any kind. It's just gibberish. You've failed to communicate by um, using language very, very poorly. Oh, but anyway, yes. We talk about anti-gravity, we're talking about weight. But when we talk about weight, we actually have to define what it is. And by defining weight, we know that anti-gravity, so-called, so to say, is an undeniable absolute. It's still not saying anything. It's not an undeniable absolute. It's a consequence of force, and you can have a compensating force. It, it simply is. That's not my feeling or opinion or belief. It's an absolute undeniable. Anyway, thanks for watching. And then we apply a platonic retroduction to the uh, conundrum of weight and anti-gravity. Right, and you said absolutely nothing on a, any subject close to anything in the title. <laughs> so, yes, bravo. Um, for failing dismally to live up to the name of the person who you've stolen uh, their identity and image of. Uh, if they could again walk the earth as a zombie, I'm sure they wouldn't eat your brain. I'm sure they'd take a big fat dump on it. Alright, so I did my job, right? Yeah, I believe I did. Alright, so uh, congratulations, Ken. You're a dumbass. <laughs> yeah, way to go. Uh, mission accomplished. If that's what you're trying to, to talk, <laughs> yeah, you accomplished it. So, anyway, how does this image come up? Well, we'll just go back to his channel page and pretend this one never showed up, whatever the hell it was. Alright, so that's enough of that and such. So, uh, until the next time and such.